Do you know what percentage of Indian families own a motorized vehicle, a car or a two-wheeler or anything? Well, you may not know the exact number, but for sure, you intuitively know that the number is very small. How many Indian families cook their food every day? Again, the number is not important. I'm only trying to remind you that this number is very, very large. Practically every Indian family cooks food. It has to, right? While only a small portion of Indians own vehicles, every family lights a fire when it's time to cook food. Yet, we are all so keenly talking about electrification of mobility as a means to decarbonizing the Indian economy, but we hardly talk about the lower hanging fruit, namely decarbonizing the cooking activity. Cooking food twice a day or thrice a day to feed 1.4 billion mouths is a carbon emitting activity that nobody seems to bother about. Carbon from cooking is really more than an elephant in the room. It is a huge mammoth. While in countries like China, Japan, the Philippines and some countries of Southeast Asia, the kitchens are fully electrified, India still depends almost entirely upon fossil fuels for cooking. Even clean cooking in India is still using only natural gas or LPG, both of which are fossil fuels. Yes, natural gas and LPG are much more benign fossil fuels than biomass, say firewood, animal dung and so on. But they are still fossil fuels and they do leave a carbon footprint. Now imagine how things would be if all Indians cooked their food only on induction stoves or micro ovens or electric cookers. The carbon footprint would be much less, indeed zero, if and when, even if sometime in the distant future, if all the electricity that comes into electric cooking appliances comes from renewable energy. Animesh Mishra, who heads the sales, at the government-owned energy services company, Energy Efficiency Services Limited or EESL stresses that electric cooking is much safer, more convenient, more efficient and certainly more affordable. Quoting some experts, Animesh Mishra told me recently that cooking rajma on an induction stove works out about 30% cheaper than LPG. Now, here is an experiment that all of you can do at home. Try to cook, say, a quarter kg of rice on an LPG stove and another quarter kg of rice on an induction stove at the same time simultaneously. Check the time it takes to cook and calculate the costs. You will find electric cooking a lot cheaper and more convenient. Animesh Mishra of EESL, as I said, says, now is the time to push for electric cooking in India. EESL is a company whose mandate is to push for energy efficiency by popularizing the use of more energy efficient electrical appliances, by bringing down their costs, mainly by aggregating demand and ordering in bulk. Demand aggregation is its model. You may all remember it made a success of LED bulb distribution by buying bulbs in bulk in huge numbers, 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs like that, and distributing the bulbs for a fraction of the costs, like charging 10 rupees for a bulb that costs about 70 rupees, and then collecting the rest of the cost in little, little monthly installments. The company has so far distributed about 380 million bulbs under the government's Ujala program. EESL wants to do something similar for electric cooking. Within the next two months or three months, EESL will come out with its first tender to procure electric induction stoves. Initially, it intends to buy about 20,000 induction stoves, 20,000. With bulk orders, manufacturers will be able to bring down the cost of the stove. And EESL will be able to sell the stoves, mostly online, for very low prices. Of course, 20,000 induction stoves is just the beginning. Compared to what is required in India, it is a small number. But the market is very, very large. Prime Minister's Ujwala Yojana, which, you know, gives away LPG cylinders free of cost to poor people, rural people. So far, 80 million cylinders, 8 crore cylinders have been distributed. This means that the potential for induction stoves is also not less than 80 million or 8 crores. Now, 
there are a couple of angles to consider when it comes to electric cooking. First, is it possible to use the same utensils? Will food taste the same? And can you do all kind of cooking? For example, can you puff a roti on an induction stove? Mishra says the answer to all these questions is yes. You can use any flat bottom iron or stainless steel utensils on induction stove, though perhaps you may not be able to use aluminum bottom or copper bottom, but any plain stainless steel utensil is good to go for uh, induction stove. And the food tastes just the same. There is no difference in the taste of the food. It has been tested. So, cooking is no issue. In any case, even if there is an issue with cooking on an induction stove, you know, with things like making puff rotis, uh, every family would also have an LPG stove as a backup. That can be used for example for about 10 percent of the cooking. In any case, a family will be able to do a large part of its cooking on the electric induction stoves. So, that is not a problem. The second angle to consider is, you know, what will happen to the grid stability if every morning all the households in the country switch on their induction stoves? How will the grid react? Will it be possible to handle the grid? First of all, India's grid itself is being upgraded in order to be able to handle large amounts of variations in power, large amount of uh, storage is being brought in. So, the grid can be enabled to handle all these things. And in any case, these cooking appliances consume only a tiny amount of electricity. So, it is not as though when everybody switches this on, uh, there is going to be some problem with the grid. That has been kind of modeled into that whole program. With the government of India, through its company EESL pushing so hard for electric cooking, India's journey towards electrifying kitchens can be said to have begun. Like with electric mobility, even if the electricity comes from fossil fuels, electric cooking is still a step towards decarbonizing the country's economy. If the electricity for cooking comes from renewable sources like wind or solar, fantastic. It will be a bigger step, much longer step towards decarbonizing the economy and it is happening slowly. EESL is indeed working on bulk procurement and distribution of solar powered induction stoves. A time will come when mini grids or micro grids that are energized by locally set up solar plants will supply power to villages. When that happens, electric cooking will really be a major step towards decarbonization, but that is for later. Right now, the immediate goal is to go electric in cooking. For more videos on India's green transition journey, please do subscribe.